Hello YouTube. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kasha and today is Thriller Thursday. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Kasha and here every Thursday I post a video on a true crime story. So make sure to hit that subscribe button because I am here for you every Thursday. First of all, can I say happy October, everyone? I'm on Pizzazzled. I plan on actually getting dressed up for every video. Today's killer is Leonardo Sincilli. She was a practicing palm reader. So I figured this fits the occasion. Palm reader, gypsy, you can get it. Okay, so Leonardo Sincilli, also known as the soap maker of Curiago, was an Italian serial killer who lured middle-aged victims into her house with promises of giving them a better job or a husband, etc. And she would sacrifice them. Then she would turn their bodies into tea cakes and soap. Story begins in 1893. There was a man named Marino Sincilli who forced himself on a poor woman whose name was Serafina Marano. Serafina became pregnant due to this horrible act. And to add to her trauma, she was forced to marry that hideous man. I mean, oh, that horrible man. If I mean, I swear, if my parents forced me to marry that perpetrator, I would be P.O. So you can imagine how her, her mother was. In April of 1894, Leonardo was born. Even though it was not her fault, Leonardo's mother was very mean to her. Her mother did not love her and was never good to her. That poor child. She didn't ask for any of this. You know, she was just, oh. Poor girl, so she had a heart growing up. The emotional neglect that Leonardo experienced had caused herself to try to commit suicide, not once, but twice, while she was still a young child. While she was a teen, Leonardo figured she would go to a gypsy fortune teller to figure out what was going on with her life, what her future might have in store for her. The gypsy fortune teller that she had visited told her, you marry and have children. However, all your children is gonna die. In 1917, Leonardo got married to a gentleman named Rafael Pensadi. He was a registry office clerk. Her parents did not approve of this marriage because they had already set her up to marry some other gentleman. How dare she go behind her back and marry someone that she actually loved? Leonardo believed that her mother cursed her since she married another gentleman against her will. Against their will, that is. And now, nothing good could happen in her life. By going against her parents' wish, she was banished from the home, so then she had to go and move in with her new husband. She had to go move to her husband's town, Alaria. In 1927, she was sentenced to fraud and imprisoned. Now, I do not know what she did. I tried digging it up, but I just know that she did something fraudulent, got caught and got imprisoned for it. When she was released, her husband and her wanted a whole fresh new start. So they moved to Larsadona. In 1913, an earthquake had hit their house that they just moved in with a magnitude of 6. Point six. It killed over 1,400 people. Leonardo and her husband had to get whatever they could and move again. They moved to Cariago, which was their final destination. Leonardo opened up a small, thriving soap shop. She was doing great selling her soaps. She was well-known in her neighborhood. She was a well-respected woman. Leonardo underwent 17 pregnancies. Three of them resulted in miscarriages, and 10 of her children 
died while they were still young. So she only had four that were left over. Those four babies that she had left, you could believe that she was a very, very protective mother. Since her youth, Leonardo was always interested in palm reading. It only increased as she became a mother. When World War II broke out and her oldest son was to join the Italian army, Leonardo claimed to be visited by the Virgin Mary who told her that she must sacrifice humans to protect her sons for that they would take her son's place in the afterlife. With the desire to uncover more in her life, Leonardo sought after the help of another fortune teller. The fortune teller who practiced palm reading told Leonardo, In your right hand, I conceive a prison. And in your left hand, I see an asylum. Regardless of what the fortune teller had told her, Leonardo put her son before her foretold future and carried out a deviated plan in the hopes of keeping him alive. Her first victim was Falsina Seti. She was told that a husband was found for her in Pola. Leonardo persuaded Miss Seti to write some letters and postcards to her friends and relatives that were to be posted once she reached Pola. Sneaky woman. On a day of departure, Miss Seti came over to say goodbye to Leonardo. This is where Leonardo gave Miss Seti a glass of drugged wine, which Miss Seti had drank. and perished. Leonardo then dragged Miss Seti's body to a closet. She took an ax, chopped her body up to nine pieces. She drained her blood into a basin for easy cleanup. In order to make the disposal easier and much faster. As later she told the police, I threw the pieces into a pot. I added seven kilos of caustic soda, which I had purchased for making soap. I stirred the pieces until they dissolved and turned into a dark mush. I took the mush and emptied it into several buckets, which I emptied out and disposed of into the nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it had coagulated, dried it in the oven, ground it and mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk, and eggs, as well as a bit of margarine. Kneading all the ingredients together, I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to ladies who came to visit. The Giuseppe and I ate them too. Francesca Soli was Leonardo's second victim. Leonardo trapped her second victim. Leonardo told Miss Sobe that she had a teaching job lined up for her. And once again, she had Miss Sobe write letters and postcards before she, you know, to take with her on her trip, offered her ever to come to her house, gave Miss Sati a glass of wine, and then again dragged her body over to the closet and hacked her up also in nine pieces and did the same suit all over again. Victim number three, Virginia Cacapella. Leonardo pulled the same trick on Virginia Cacapella, whom is her third victim. Virginia was a soprano opera singer. She's looking for secretary work. And Leonardo once again did the same as she did as two women. However, Virginia's body was just, for some reason, a little bit different. She used more of Virginia's body than she did her previous two victims. According to Leonardo's statement, She ended up in a pot, like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. 
When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne. After a long time on the boil, I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbors and acquaintances. The cakes, too, were better. That woman was really sweet. The killing of Miss Virginia earned Leonardo the nickname and title, the soap maker of Corriego. Virginia's sister-in-law was the first to become suspicious, noting that her sister-in-law's absence happened after she had visited Miss Leonardo's house. She contacted the police and Leonardo was quickly arrested. Now, Leonardo did not confess to the crimes. She knew the police did not have anything on her except for someone seeing the last person enter her home before their disappearance. However, when the police went to arrest Leonardo's son, just a peep, thinking that maybe he had something to do with it since it was, you know, a woman that was missing. So maybe her son had something to do with it. Leonardo quickly confessed to everything, told the police her son had nothing to do with it. She made sure that he had nothing to do with it. She took all the blame because he didn't do anything. He didn't even know of any of this that had happened. Leonardo confessed to the murders and she provided lots of details. She provided detailed accounts of what she had done to the victims and their bodies. She even went as far as correcting the persecutors for details that they said they were wrong, correcting them. Oh no, no, that's not how I did it. I did it this way. No, that's not how I did it. I took an ax. Oh no, I cut it up into exactly nine pieces. Oh, the blood? Oh, oh yes, I took that blood and I put it in the basin. That's why you couldn't find any blood. She made sure to correct all the details when the prosecutors were incorrect. Leonardo was eventually sentenced to 30 years in prison and then three years in an asylum. Leonardo died of cerebral apoplexy in the asylum. She died in the asylum at 76 years old of October 15th, 1970. So, I want to know what was your thoughts on this video? Did you like this video? Lady turning people into tea cakes and soup so crunchy ah. thank you so much for watching please don't forget to hit that like button make sure you subscribe and i will see you next thursday i will not tell you who it is next thursday but i already got somebody for next thursday i hope to see you on next Thursday. Thank you all for stopping by. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. That is a good cookie.